college football spring games at Ohio State, Georgia, LSU, Utah, and many more after the stinger. Hello and welcome to episode 36 of Good Morning College Football. I'm Nicholas Ian Allen of CampusToCanton.com and CFB Winning Edge. And, uh, you know, trying to, to catch up on some last minute items before uh, we went live. So my apologies for a little bit of a, uh, you know, lull there as we were trying to uh, get the show started on time. But uh, there is already plenty of uh, transfer portal news that we're having to adjust to and, and at Campus to Canton and our uh, C2C winning edge and all 22 tiers. Uh, you have access to our returning production database, which uh, in my opinion is is one of the best places to uh, stay up to date, not only on the, the news, we rely very heavily on uh, Beat reporters out there who are looking into Transfer Portal news, great sites like 247 Sports on 3 do excellent uh, work, not only reporting that information, but logging it in their databases. Uh, but we try to make those updates as quickly as possible to that returning production database, as well as our 2023 team profiles, while our 2024 team profiles are still a few weeks away from uh, being published. And, you know, the, the beauty of that returning production database is uh, you can see, you know, as soon as we log a you know, transfer going out or a transfer coming in, you can see how that impacts the percentages of, you know, last year's uh, roster, whether it's passing production, rushing production, uh, dozens of defensive categories, offensive line, uh, all kinds of great stuff. Uh, you know, we, we try to, like I said, keep that up to date as quickly as possible, even leading into the final seconds, uh, you know, ahead of going live with Good Morning College Football. But uh, on that note, before we dig into all the spring game uh, news and, and takeaways that we'll be discussing this morning, uh, there is so much that we are, you know, probably not even going to be halfway done. Uh, we'll be talking spring games the rest of the week, I can imagine, uh, and I'm sure for weeks to come because uh, as action packed as uh, this weekend's slate was next weekend is, is going to be just as busy. So uh, first and foremost, though, if this is your first time joining us, uh, please uh, give this video a like. If you're joining us live, we very much appreciate that. But also, of course, uh, really do appreciate you uh, supporting the Campus to Canton YouTube channel, subscribing there, liking this video. Uh, that helps keep this show uh, going, quite honestly. Um, this is a, an incredibly busy time, you know, not just trying to keep track of uh, transfer news, but as mentioned, trying to get those team profiles uh, published and, and uh, ready to go as quickly as possible to uh, our All-22 and C2C Winning Edge members. Um, but also, you know, we, we want to make sure that uh, this show is able to run and, and uh, you know, that, that we're able to take some time out three times a week uh, to catch you all up to date on, on any of the uh, news or, or information, notes, quotes from a wide variety of sources that you might have missed, uh, whether it's over the weekend or, or throughout the course of a busy week. So uh, by liking this video, by subscribing to the Campus to Canton YouTube channel, you help uh, keep us uh, able to to do that. So we, we very much appreciate that. And then, of course, we really appreciate those of you who are uh, supporting us at campusdecanton.com. You can join there for as little as $2.99 per month, get access to tons of information, written content, uh, Discord access. Um, but then also we've got a wide variety of tiers that go all the way up to those C2C Winning Edge and all 22 packages where you get access to uh, everything. That, that we've got to offer uh, at campustocanton.com. So uh, first, uh, before really digging into uh, the spring games, just want to hit a couple of news items. As I mentioned, you know, I was trying to make some transfer portal updates, uh, lost track of time just a little bit as, as we were ready to 
to go live. Uh, but a couple of injuries uh, were reported over the weekend. Matt Zenitz of 247 Sports reported that Texas A&M wide receiver John Brent Barber, a transfer from Troy, has undergone surgery to repair a foot injury that is expected to sideline him for, uh, quote, several months. So I'm sure we'll get a little more detail there. Hopefully, Barber will be uh, able to get back and healthy by time the season kicks off this fall, but something we'll certainly need to note. Uh, Barber was a very productive receiver uh, in the Sunbelt Conference last season. I know was a, a favorite of that Troy uh, coaching staff. Seemed like every quote uh, that I came across, uh, you know, in the past year or so was just raving about uh, Barber. And sounds like the Texas A&M staff had been uh, quite impressed as well. So unfortunate news there. Also at UCLA, potential uh, starting tight end Hudson Habermel went down um, very late in a practice last week, according to Ben Bolch of the Los Angeles Times. Uh, sounds like it was uh, a bit of an ugly situation. Uh, Habermel uh, screaming in anguish, according to Bolch. Uh, head coach Desan Foster was noticeably uh, you know, impacted, uh, said he was so broken up when he walked up to talk to the media and then walked away to compose himself before returning that according to Bolch. Uh, so uh, hope, hopefully uh, a, a speedy recovery for Habermel, who um, only had nine catches for 148 yards uh, last season, but did score three touchdowns and a UCLA offense that um, is, you know, going to be a, a new look outfit this season and, and Habermel really looked like he was uh, potentially going to be the starting tight end there, certainly in line to play a lot of snaps. Uh, but also, as mentioned, some transfer portal news. Um, uh, over the weekend, uh, some names already have started to uh, trickle out uh, players intending to enter the transfer portal when it opens. Uh, one of those, Bill Norton, defensive lineman at Arizona, uh, experienced player there. The interior of the defensive line is definitely uh, a position of need for just about everybody. So you can imagine that Norton, who started his career at Georgia, is going to be uh, very much in the mix there. Uh, some Louisville uh, linemen, both on the offensive and defensive line, uh, are uh, expected to enter the transfer portal. Pete Nakos of On3 Sports uh, listed four offensive linemen, uh, several of which were expected to compete for uh, starting roles this season. Ruben Onije and uh, Victor Cutler, both of them incoming transfers from Houston and Ohio State, respectively, uh, as well as returners from last year's team, Trevante Sylvester and Lance Robinson, uh, all four expected to enter the transfer portal, uh, as is defensive lineman Jermaine Lowell who uh, that was reported by Hayes Fawcett of On3 that I saw. Uh, Lowell, another big interior defensive lineman, a position of need. Just about everybody's listed at 6'3", 310 pounds. Um, played uh, earlier in his career at Arizona State, was a starter last year at Louisville. Um, but uh, Louisville's a, a team that we talked a little bit about uh, a couple of weeks ago when we first were digging into our top 25 power ratings expected to be our uh you know top top 10 top 15 power ratings and, and louisville is very much in that discussion uh right now according to our numbers and, and we still have a, a bit of work to do to finish up all the teams but um don't expect anybody that's left on the the to-do list is going to pass uh, louisville who right now is 13th in uh the country uh a top two team in the ACC as our current ratings uh, sit. So um, there certainly will be changes to those as we make adjustments, um, certainly to players who are projected, you know, either as starters on the depth chart or, or uh, two deep contributors, um, but also, you know, where do those players move to and, and what teams could potentially uh, jump, uh, you know, up in the ratings based on incoming transfers transfers in this window. So um, these these power ratings, as they always are for us, uh, they change and, and uh, can be impacted by news, players moving in, players moving out. But a few others of note, and there will be many, many more that we will discuss on Wednesday, I'm sure. Players that 
uh, you know, we, we haven't even thought of yet. But um, running back Rashad Amos, who was a breakout performer for Miami of Ohio in their MAC championship uh, winning season last year, started his career at South Carolina. He is going back to the SEC, has committed to Mississippi State, uh, which was a team that when we were having our Damian Martinez discussion, uh, didn't necessarily expect Martinez to end up there, but Mississippi State was a team that sort of jumped out based on those returning production numbers uh, as losing a lot of production at that running back position hadn't really filled it much yet um you know the, through uh, the portal certainly had recruited um freshmen and, and junior college players to come in but injuries had already impacted that position or, or were carried over from last year i should say so uh really made sense that amos would end up uh, at mississippi state um a few other uh, group of five uh, conference uh, notes, potential impact players, if you're thinking in uh, college fantasy football terms, but Justin Ross Simmons uh, expected to be the number two wide out at Colorado State, really made some big plays last year for the Rams. Uh, he is entering the transfer portal. Uh, head coach Jay Norvell uh, said over the weekend that Ross Simmons was no longer with the Rams, and and not long after, um, it was confirmed in you know multiple reports that he was moving on. We've seen several New Mexico State uh, players, uh, Conference USA title uh, game. Uh, team last year, uh, just in, in the last week or so, several starters on offense for the Aggies have been in the transfer portal. The latest is Jamani Jones, uh, who's been a starting running back there, part of the running back rotation. And then Utah State has a, a pretty uh, just, just sort of... Uh, 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 <laughs> packed, I guess, uh, quarterback competition, you know, four quarterbacks competing for that number one spot. McKay Halstead, who had started a few games last year as a red shirt, or excuse me, a, a true freshman, um, and really uh, at times outplayed Cooper Laga, uh, who had, had been the starter earlier in the year. Halstead went down with an injury uh, late in the season, but um, it, it sounds like as of now, he is planning to leave the Aggie. So uh, I've heard a lot of buzz uh, about Spencer Petrus, the last uh, scrimmage that uh, Utah State had, I believe on Thursday, uh, perhaps it was. Petrus had an uh, incredibly high completion percentage, you know, good numbers, uh, whatever, you know, however much uh, emphasis we want to put on uh, spring scrimmage numbers. But uh, Halstead perhaps seeing uh, some competition from some uh, veteran quarterbacks there decided that he was going to have a better opportunity to compete for playing time elsewhere. All right. Now for the spring game news and notes, we will start at Ohio State. And like we did last Monday, as, as always, I try to make sure to give credit where it's due as far as the folks who are writing up these reports, uh, giving quotes from coaches and players, giving their insight and observation, uh, especially in cases where um, you know, maybe I haven't had an opportunity to, to take in some of these spring games yet. Most of my spring game watching is done in the summer personally, so I lean pretty heavily, uh, not only for the show, but for my own you know, personal uh, knowledge right now on those reports that are coming out. And among the Ohio State reports I read uh, since the game uh, was uh, broadcast on Fox on Saturday, uh, Dan Hope and Josh Pahola of 11 Warriors had some uh, great write-ups. Matt Galatson of Buckeyes Now, Spencer Holbrook of Letterman Row, and Cameron Teak Robinson of The Athletic. All of them contributed uh, some of uh, what I'm about to, to pass along here. But uh, the, the biggest uh, you know, item of discussion, certainly for Ohio State, is the quarterback competition, most notably between Will Howard and Devin Brown, where it sounds like those two, despite you know, some, some uh, other very talented players in that quarterback room, including true freshman Julian Sayan, who uh, there's quite a lot of positive buzz about this spring, Howard and Brown seemingly have, have uh, separated themselves as uh, the top two contenders here. And according to all reports, basically, um, uh, neither of them uh, really outplayed the other to the point where it's a, it's a done deal, right? So um, uh, 
the the quarterback competition wasn't won or lost by either Howard or Brown, according to Pope, uh, or excuse me, Hope, Dan Hope. Um, and unless one of those players, you know, concedes that competition, perhaps by entering the transfer portal, which is always a uh, you know potential concern uh, hit to the depth there, um, it is not likely that this competition will be settled uh, before uh, late in fall camp. Quotes from head coach Ryan Day and offensive coordinator Chip Kelly uh, were non-committal. Um, however, it was a little bit interesting. We've talked about this competition plenty so far uh, in, in the late uh, late winter and early spring that Devin Brown had taken a lot of the uh, you know first snaps of practices that uh, media were able to view throughout the, the course of spring practice. Well, Howard was the first quarterback on the field on Saturday, um, and uh, observations were mixed, but but even though Brown uh, put up slightly better numbers and also uh, led a touchdown drive, which Will Howard uh, did not, um, uh, multiple uh, reports seem to indicate that, that Howard uh, looked a little better, perhaps. Um, there had been notes throughout the course of the spring that Howard had struggled a little bit with the deep ball, um, uh, but uh, he did complete uh, a, a high percentage of passes in the spring game Saturday. Um, but, uh, you know, Devin Brown was uh, perhaps most in control on one particular drive where he was three of three for 50 yards and threw the only touchdown of uh, the, the early portion and among these two quarterbacks. Um, but uh, regardless, you know, and I try not to dig too much into specific numbers. I certainly will mention numbers, uh, you know, from these spring games, but um, I, I wouldn't, you know, take too much away from, uh, you know, so-and-so through for 300 yards, as we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but uh, so Day had some quotes uh, from the game here talking about Will Howard said, quote, I think that over the spring, the timing is increasing. It's getting better over and over again. I think the more reps that all these guys get, the better. He had some nice completions in there, and I think there was a sack in there. Maybe he held on to it a little too long. And Wynn was going pretty hard today, so I think we underthrew a couple of balls. But overall, I thought he had at least uh, – I, I thought he had – at least had a good comfort level uh, for the first drive in the shoe. Um, 80,000 fans there at the Horseshoe, uh, nationally televised, sort of a, a rare deal on, on network television. Um, but uh, as you mentioned, you know, wind, a little bit of an issue. That was certainly something that impacted other spring games elsewhere. Um, but one of the takeaways is I was sort of reading through uh, some other observations uh, you know on twitter during during the game uh, one thing that that popped out a couple of times to me because we mentioned this in our big 10 power rating show uh on on friday we mentioned this um earlier in spring when we've discussed this this quarterback competition one the 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 thing that came out multiple times was, oh, I don't see a national championship quarterback uh, on on the field today. And, you know, that is a little bit of a concern when I was talking about, you know, power ratings, when I was talking about Ohio State being number one overall right now in our team strength power ratings. I mentioned that there is plenty of room uh, for improvement at the quarterback position. Uh, both Devin Brown and Will Howard are you know, rated in the high 80s in our uh, video game ratings, our individual player ratings uh, that encompass, you know, raw recruiting data, raw talent coming in, but are adjusted for experience and production. So Howard has been able to uh, close the gap and, and uh, you know, perhaps surpass Brown's more raw, you know, higher rated uh, freshman recruiting rating as he had coming in. Um, uh, one, I, I think that, you know, that might, take care of itself in time. This is just a spring game. So let's not, you know, read too much into it. But also, you know, one one thing that that I feel like needs to be uh, mentioned and, and we've said it here, but uh, keep it in mind, this Ohio State defense is perhaps 
the best in the country. I mean, it is uh, the way we calculate it looks like the most talented in the country, one of the most talented we've ever uh, seen as far as our uh, CFP winning edge roster strength ratings. Um, they're number one in defensive roster strength. And, you know, they are they are just packed with talent at every level of the defense. So um, they're going to make a lot of quarterbacks look bad. I, I, I would very much caution, um, you know, overreacting to uh, a, a particular quarterback, good or bad. Um, and to say that that Ohio State doesn't have a national championship quarterback right now, you know, maybe it didn't look like it on Saturday. But I, I think that that's probably um, – uh, a little, it's a little too soon for me to, to make that declaration. But regardless, whoever it is, Will Howard or Devin Brown, going to be able to hand off to Trevion Henderson, Quinchon Judkins. Um, the run game looked good. The offensive line looks like it is settling in a bit. Um, we saw the play of the day from a receiver standpoint with Amika Buka making a great catch on the sideline. Quiet day from Jeremiah Smith, the five star true freshman. But overall, the Ohio State uh, defense, you know, played well. The quarterbacks had, you know, uh, some some up and down moments, but um, overall the numbers pretty good. And the future at the position looks bright as well. As I mentioned, uh, you know, Jalen uh, Julian saying there were some very uh, positive quotes from Chip Kelly after the game, uh, talking about him and saying uh, did finish as the leading passer in the game, 85 yards on uh, 10 completions, 17 attempts. Um, and Ryan Day late last week said that Saiyan was, quote, in the mix for uh, the starting comp uh, competition. But on Saturday, uh, Howard and Brown took all the snaps behind the first-team offensive line, while Lincoln Kinehold, Saiyan, and Aaron Nolan saw all of their work with the backup. So uh, that suggested that that uh, perhaps this is the the two-man race that we expected um all right now at georgia the uh numbers look good for carson beck uh overall beck ended up throwing 46 passes if if these numbers are correct uh was 25 of 46 for 301 yards two touchdowns did have two interceptions um but uh, you know what wasn't the smoothest day uh for beck these reports coming from seth emerson the athletic mike griffith of dog nation uh among others um griffith noted that uh uj sound reporter dj shockley said that beck told him the offense was quote so vanilla the defense had seen everything four five six or ten times so they know what we're doing out of certain formations i think that is a a really uh, good quote to keep in mind anytime we're talking about spring games and you know we're here three days a week. We need things to talk about. We're definitely going to talk about spring games. They are uh, certainly the most visible uh, aspect of the spring, but uh, keep that in mind. You know, keep that in mind as you're talking about Ohio State. If, if uh, you know, a uh, quarterback was picked off, and, and you know, was it that um, he made a bad play, or is it because the defense, you know, knew what was coming? knows the term you know the terminology knows maybe the play call knows uh you know what this motion may mean um there's it's it's tougher to go up against your uh your own team uh in in those situations and everybody in spring games you know that that uh, word vanilla is said so often and it's it's true quite honestly you know why would ohio state want to show um, you know, their, their early season opponents, uh, something new necessarily, unless it's to make them want to, you know, spend extra time in the, in the off season studying a certain thing. I mean, maybe that's why we saw the, the, you know, T formation. Uh, I don't know, but for the most part, you know, we, we try to, try to, uh, keep things in check, especially if a quarterback is struggling, you know, maybe it's the wind but also maybe uh, the defense, you know, just, just knew what was coming. But uh, a lot of positive uh, things coming out of spring practice overall. 
as far as playmakers at Georgia. Uh, you know, they're, of course, having to replace Brock Bowers, having to replace Ladd McConkey, among others. Uh, Dominic Lovett had a big game, had seven catches for 104 yards. Um, there's also been a lot of positive buzz about Miami transfer Colby Young. Um, he had a third down completion to move the stakes and a touchdown on a short pattern. Uh, Dylan Bell and Rara Thomas both going to play a lot, both uh, look, quote, dangerous on the outside. Uh, and then Lawson Lucky had uh, an 18-yarder, 18 18-yard uh, catch in the game. The running back group is deep. Uh, we did see Trevor Etienne, despite you know, legal situation uh, that he was dealing with earlier in the spring. He had four carries for 24 yards and three catches for 33 yards. Showed a good burst. Uh, Roderick Robinson at 240 pounds, expected to be uh, the thunder to Etienne's lightning. Uh, but one of the perhaps surprise performers, uh, somebody that we've heard a lot of whispers, um, maybe haven't mentioned it very much in the show, but uh, Andrew Paul, is a, a running back who's dealt with a lot of injuries. There have been whispers that perhaps he's the most likely to transfer out, but he looked good in the spring game. So will he be able to maybe carve out a role at Georgia this year? Or perhaps could he have you know, put something positive on tape that he will take to another destination uh, later this week? We will find out sooner rather than later, I'm sure. At Alabama, the uh, stats... Uh, weren't sparkling for Jalen Milrow, completed just three of nine passes, uh, but that went for 100 yards, a, a good chunk of that coming on a 52-yard completion. That was the long of the day for the Alabama passing attack. Uh, Alabama uh, ran the football pretty well. Jam Miller had eight carries, 83 yards, and two touchdowns, broke off a 48-yarder. Uh, there was a wide receiver, uh, Kendrick Law, who got involved on a 34-yarder, actually ended up second to Miller as far as the leaders go. Justice Haynes only had three carries for 10 yards, but did score a touchdown. Milrow, two carries, eight yards uh, on the day. Jeremy Bernard was the standout at wide receiver, expected to be likely the number one uh, target for Milrow this year. The transfer from Washington had three catches, 122 yards, and that 52-yard uh, connection with Milrow. Um, so uh, good, good news from him as well. According to Charlie Potter of Bama Online, who uh, wrote these stats and, and also uh, had some observations there, uh, Bernard was one of several receivers that stood out, along with Cole Adams, Emmanuel Henderson, and Caleb Odom. Uh, so the the biggest takeaway, sort of the you know, as I was uh, seeing other folks react to uh, the spring game, I know Jared Pongren was actually on location in Tuscaloosa for this, so I'm sure he's got plenty to add on chasing the natty. Haven't had an opportunity to to listen yet, uh, but uh, would it, would you know certainly. Uh, trust his input uh, in general as, you know, somebody who's just very smart and puts a lot of time and effort into this sort of thing, but also getting to, to see it firsthand. I know it, it sounded a lot like he was very impressed with Jim Miller from what I was able to gather, um, but, but Miller and, and Bernard, perhaps the biggest winners from the Alabama spring game. Elsewhere, at LSU, not much surprising on the offensive side of the ball. Garrett Nussmeyer looked great, was perfect uh, as far as his completion percentage goes, completed all seven of his passes for 187 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Jared Paul Joseph of WGNO had some quotes from Brian Kelly, the LSU head coach afterward, said, quote, I thought he was clean today. I thought he was efficient. I thought he did the things that we expected him to do. Talking about Nussmeyer, of course. Uh, quote, it's not going to be Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas. It's going to have a different look to the explosiveness, but you can still be explosive. Uh, but it starts uh, it starts at the line of scrimmage, and if you can't win the line of scrimmage with this offense, you will not be explosive. Uh, Zach Nagy of LSU Country was most impressed with true freshman defensive lineman Gabriel Railford. He said he stole the show on Saturday. Uh, Railford was playing with the second team and versus you know fellow second teamers, but ended the day with a pair of sacks, had several quarterback uh, hurries, um, and looked like he's going to be a potential impact 
performer as a true freshman, as an edge defender, pass rusher for LSU this year. Nagy also had a very uh, insightful take on the wide receiver situation. We've talked a lot this uh, spring, pretty much all the reports that we've had coming out of spring practice, many of them coming from Zach Nagy at LSU Country, um, mentioned, you know, Kyron Lacey, clear number one receiver, and Chris Hilton Jr., you know, pretty much clearly alongside Lacey in that, uh, you know, starting group of three wide receivers. There have been more discussion about, you know, will somebody like C.J. Daniels or Xavier Thomas, who was a standout in the spring game, will one of those guys break through and start alongside Lacey and Hilton, or will it be, you know, Aaron Anderson, who had sort of late in spring, uh, seemingly separated him a little bit, it looked like he had the inside track on that third spot. Um, you know, Shelton Sampson Jr., somebody who has uh, had some positive moments this spring, a very highly rated recruit, of course. Um, but uh, according to Nagy, uh, and his his takeaway from the spring game uh, says Liberty transfer wide receiver CJ Daniels, the first year Tiger flaunted his elite playmaking ability, route running and more on Saturday. A player who has been rolling with the second team, he'll be a starter by the fall alongside Kyron Lacey. Um, Nagy went on to say, Lacey looked the part. Aaron Anderson showed his speed and Shelton Simpson Jr. was certainly targeted a few times. A little later, he said, uh, it'll be interesting to see what LSU does with Chris Hilton Jr. He had an eye-opening drop during the spring game, and it'll be a significant intrigue to see if he's rolling with the ones during fall camp in August. So Hilton, you know, a week or so ago, looked like perhaps you could, uh, you know, uh, expect that he would be a starting wide receiver for this LSU team, despite you know, there being a little more excitement about Daniels coming in as a transfer, Thomas coming in as a transfer. Uh, did Hilton do enough? It looks like maybe, um, you know, he was given every opportunity this spring to seize that starting job. And at least according to Zach Nagy, who's been uh, on the ground there as much, if not more than anyone else uh, that, that, you know, we've referenced this spring session for LSU. Sounds like Hilton's uh, starting spot is on shaky ground and that C.J. Daniels, perhaps, um, as a lot of folks expected when Daniels transferred in, uh, might be the, the benis, biggest beneficiary of that. We shall see. At Miami, Adam Lichtenstein of the South Florida Sun Sentinel and Manny Navarro of The Athletic were among uh, many of the, the you know Miami Beat reporters on hand for the spring game, uh, Cam Ward, you know, from day one of spring practice has uh, just looked like an absolute uh, game changer for Miami, according to all reports, um, did not disappoint in the spring game. He connected with Xavier Restrepo on a long pass in the first drive, ended that first series with a touchdown pass to Isaiah Horton, uh, who was a standout and had a lot of, uh, there, there was a lot of positive um, mention of Horton after the game. Uh, Restrepo finished with 116 yards on six catches, uh, so he was a big part of Ward's day. Ward completed 19 of 24 passes for 324 yards and three touchdowns, that according to the broadcast. Um, one of the more interesting players uh, in uh, you know Miami's spring period has been uh, tight end True freshman Elijah Lofton, who in recent weeks has been playing a lot more running back. Um, he was uh, getting uh, you know plenty of action in the spring game, uh, but Mario Cristobal, uh, the head coach, afterward, uh, you know, kind of an interesting quote uh, talking about Lofton says he does a lot of things. You should see him on defense. Uh, so we've talked about Lofton or you know Lofton coming in as a tight end you know, taking reps uh, as an H-back as well, but a lot more uh, at running back. And, and it sounds like he could excel. We've heard multiple quotes from Cristobal that, that indicate that he could excel uh, at a wide variety of places, including defense potentially. Um, so curious to see what Lofton's role looks like. Sounds like he will have a role as a true freshman this season, but uh, does Miami feel good enough about what he's done at running back to maybe not be as aggressive as expected in the transfer portal at that position? Uh, time time will tell. Um, 
But uh, so again, Cam Ward looked good. Three touchdown passes, um, had nearly as many touchdown passes as he had in completions. Um, but as Manny Navarro pointed out, you know, this is sort of the, you know, it's good news on one end, it's bad news on the other in a spring game. Um, the Hurricanes secondary tackled poorly and looked like it could use a boost from the transfer portal, that according to Navarro. So keep that in mind for any team that, you know, putting up big numbers in its spring game. Um, uh, Navarro noted that uh, the first team offense had Horton and Restrepo at receiver, Cam McCormick and Elijah Arroyo at tight end. Chris Johnson got the number one reps at running back. Um, and then Elijah Lofton spelled Johnson in the backfield. Um, uh, it also is worth noting, not just the secondary being a little bit of a, uh, an area of concern, but Miami, uh, had several uh, potential starters on both sides of the ball out. That included running back Mark Fletcher, who hopefully will be back and, and fully healthy. That'll impact uh, Lofton's workload in the in the uh, fall as well. But um, right tackle Francis uh, Moigoa was out. Edge defender Akeem Mesidor and Elijah Alston were both out. And middle linebacker Kiko Moigoa was out as well. At Utah, Joe Coles of the Deseret News had a, a great write-up on uh, the Utes this spring and their uh, finale of spring practice where Cam Rising uh, looked 100% according uh, to reports. Uh, on the first play of the scrimmage, Rising found Dorian Singer, the transfer from USC, for a six-yard game, uh, and he continued to uh, you know work his way down the... Uh, the field for multiple scores, Cam Rising finished 15 of 19 for 208 yards, had two touchdowns. That included a 57-yard bomb to Money Parks, uh, which, according to Coles, was the highlight of the game. Rising and Parks uh, had uh, two uh, scoring connections among their uh, three. Uh, Rising and Parks connected three times for 73 yards and two touchdowns. Um, driving, uh, Rising led three drives for touchdowns, all three drives, uh, converted several fourth downs in uh, that group as well. Uh, seemingly rising, has worked on his arm strength. That was something we talked about a little earlier in the spring. Kyle Whittingham, the head coach, wasn't sure, you know, if rising had quite knocked off enough rust uh, to really show what he can do arm strength wise. But on Saturday, um, it seemed like as evidenced by multiple big throws, the 57 yard touchdown to parks, as well as a 40 yard completion to singer um, that, that uh, his arm is looking good. Uh, singer finished the day with five catches for a team high of uh, 92 yards. Brent Keithy was also back and uh, healthy. Keithy was wearing a non-contact jersey or, you know, a, a yellow jersey to indicate that he should not be tackled, uh, but had two receptions um, and uh, was on the field. Looked good, according to Coles. Um, this was a very pass-heavy uh, spring game for Utah. The Utes passed it 58 times and ran it just 27. Uh, Micah Bernard only had two rushing attempts. Most Indications are that Bernard's actually still expected to be the starter despite a uh, very, very uh, light workload in the spring game. Uh, Mike Mitchell had five carries for 16 yards and a touchdown. Dijon Stanley, uh, Dijon Stanley uh, had the best run of the day, uh, an outside 10 yard gain. And then Jalen Glover, five carries for 20 yards and a touchdown. Charlie Vincent also had a touchdown. At Penn State and mentioning the wind there. And I know there's a, a, a video floating around Twitter this morning about, you know, uh, poor throws from Drew Aller. And, and uh, I'm not the you know biggest Drew Aller fan, um, but it is worth noting that uh, the, the wind was an issue uh, in Happy Valley over the weekend. Um, so keep that in mind. Again, it's probably not as good as you think. It's probably not as bad as you think. But in uh, reading some of the reports, Greg Pickle of Blue White Illustrated, who had a piece on uh, spring game superlatives that included, you know, given overaction, overreaction, a first year star standout, you know, what other uh, players stood out. But I, I thought 
uh, his final thought was was interesting. Um, he said, way too much will be made about Drew Aller completing just 15 of 32 passes for 202 yards and a touchdown. I, however, will be not, uh, will not be among the group to do so. The win was a factor on this day. Did he make some errant throws? For sure. But I also saw a willingness to fit some balls in tight windows and possibly make mistakes while doing so that I didn't see last year, which is a sign of progress. Am I sure concerns about the passion game will rage into August? Of course. And there's some validity to that, but I'm not tying it all to the spring game stat sheet. And I think that that is, is fair. And again, I'm going to sound like a broken record if I don't already. Um, something to keep in mind for, for just about any spring game report that we will get to. Uh, UCF had its spring game Friday night. Matt Marshall of the Orlando Sentinel and Chris Boyle of the Daytona Beach News Journal uh, were among those on hand. Quarterback KJ Jefferson, the Arkansas transfer, uh, threw for 271 yards on just 12 completions, was 12 of 22 passing, had two touchdowns. Uh, that included a uh, pair of 10 yard touchdown passes, one to tight end Randy Pittman, uh, one uh, was a, a 10 yard pass that ended up going for 71 yards uh, on a uh, Gerard Baker big play. Um, Jefferson was intercepted twice. Uh, he only ran two times, you know, rushing yards for any quarterback in the spring game, uh, not going to be a huge factor there, but uh, was sacked multiple times, ended up two uh, or six times, excuse me, six rushes uh, for minus seven yards, did have a long gain of 13. Uh, the quarterbacks as a whole, UCF quarterbacks, were sacked nine times in the game. Uh, leading rusher for the day was backup quarterback Timmy McLean. He had 67 yards. Transfer Cincinnati transfer running back Miles Montgomery had 34 yards. Johnny Richardson, 31. RJ Harvey, one of the top running backs in the country, uh, did not play in the game, was held out as a precaution. Uh, wide receiver Kobe Hudson was limited uh, this spring by injury. So as a result, Xavier Townsend uh, it has been having a larger role in spring practices. Uh, Townsend uh, was the leading receiver for the game, had six catches, uh, just shy of 100 yards. Uh, Baker had 88 yards. Jer Jared Baker uh, with that 71-yard touchdown being a big part of that. And then Chauncey Magwood had 70. At Tennessee, Nico Iamaleva was 7 of 9 for 96 yards, including a 27-yard touchdown pass to Chaz Nimrod in Tennessee's spring game. Patrick Brown of Go Vols 247 was on hand and uh, was part of a question and answer session uh, with Nico after. Um, there were questions about specific players, the receiver position. There have been you know, quotes from Josh Heupel talking about that Tennessee has uh, a deeper receiving group this year. Um, Nico was asked about Mike Matthews in particular, said, quote, I think his catch radius, man. He can go up and get the ball at a high level. It's rare seeing that from young guys coming in, but I think Mike Matthews, him coming in, I think we've expected that of him. And he's shown that every day in spring. Uh, Nico also brought up Braylon Staley, somewhat unprompted in that earlier question about uh, the, the depth of the wide receiver position. Uh, but one of the big items of discussion this spring for the uh, young quarterback has been uh, his leadership, how he is stepping up uh, beyond having just one-on-one -on -one conversations with teammates. Says, quote, yeah, I've been working on that, just being more vocal with the guys, being louder for them when I need to be addressing the offense when it needs to be addressed. Yeah, I think I've been taking good steps in being more vocal with the guys. Uh, when asked, you know, how conscious is he of being more vocal with the offense, with the team, says, quote, a little bit more. I think I'm more of a quiet guy. So it's definitely different for me to get out of my shell and go out there and celebrate with everybody. It's something that I'm continuing to work on. At Arkansas, Christina Long of Whole Hog Sports and Jacob Davis of All Hogs uh, were on hand where this was a starters versus backups situation, it sounds like. But still, the numbers for Taylor Green at quarterback were excellent. Uh, 15 of 21 passing for 242 yards and three touchdowns. Um, he uh, had some uh, quality connections with Tyron Broden and Andrew Armstrong, both of whom had missed some portions of spring practice. Uh, Broden had, a, uh, I believe, a personal situation 
situation. Armstrong working his way back from injury, uh, but both look good in the spring game, as did Jaquindon Jackson, who led Arkansas's running backs with 65 rushing yards on nine carries. He had two scores on the ground and also was on the receiving end of a 15-yard touchdown pass. Um, Sam Pittman, the head coach, quoted here says, uh, talking about Jackson, he's had a really good spring. He's a guy that's probably even better when it's live, talking live tackling. Uh, he looks better because he bounces off people. He uses that stiff arm a little more. He's got a violent stiff arm, but always seems to be moving forward. When he gets hit hard, he grins and gets up. He's a tough kid, a really good get out of the portal. Um, uh, defensive tackle Cam Ball was also asked about Jackson. Said, quote, you're going to need more than one person to tackle him, that's for sure. He's just a solid dude, a better person, runs behind his pads, overall a great player and a very good addition to our team. Jackson's a personal favorite of mine. I know in 2022, sort of when he uh, was making the, the full-time transition to running back at Utah, um, really impressed me multiple times last year, a little bit banged up by injury, uh, limited by injury at Utah. Uh, excited to see what he can do at Arkansas this season. All right, finishing up our last spring game discussion for these uh, power conference groups, finishing with our team of the day is going to be UTSA today. But uh, at Florida, Zach Albervel, uh, Abelverde of Gators Online uh, had uh, a few uh, write-ups, uh, both of which, uh, or many, there were, there were many positive things said, I should say, about Eugene Wilson III. Standout performer in the spring game, uh, was of course one of Florida's best players as a true freshman last year. Um, he's really been working on his yards after the catch, had 77 yards after the catch on Saturday. He caught eight passes for 128 yards and a touchdown, so a big play performer in that spring game. Um, uh, quoting here, Wilson said afterwards, I feel like uh, I feel like yards after the catch, uh, I done put on a few pounds. I felt like there was a lot left on the field last year, so I made sure to be able to go get more after the catch. Um, the big play of the day at the end of the first half was a 60-yard touchdown. Um, and as we mentioned, Wilson caught eight passes. He was targeted 11 times um, in uh, this spring game. Uh, Wilson and, and Graham Mertz um, connected uh, twice, first for 20 yards, and then a 60-yard TD in a two-play, 22-second drive. There were that resulted in the first touchdown of the day. Uh, Wilson had 30 yards after the catch on his scoring play, according to Abelverde. Um, Billy Napier quoted afterwards said, it's a product of a lot of hard work. I think uh, he did it today. Um, I think he did today what I've been watching him do all spring, been very productive. He has great practice habits, mature. I think you've seen him change his body. We're going to get our money's worth out of Trey Wilson. I can promise you that. Uh, Mertz threw for 243 yards. He was 15 of 27 uh, on the day. Uh, but DJ Lagway, the five-star true freshman, uh, was uh, very much uh, you know, just as impressive, perhaps. Uh, had a few gorgeous throws, according to reports, deep. Uh, pass attempts. Lagway finished with 173 yards. He was just 12 of 21, um, but uh, posted, uh, like I said, uh, multiple uh, sort of wow throws uh, in the spring game. One of the standouts, maybe a name to uh, write down for later, true freshman Jaden Ball. Uh, came out with uh, 12 rushing attempts for 77 yards, uh, had a 25-yarder and then another 14-yarder, um, and scored three touchdowns in the uh, scrimmage the previous Saturday, according to uh, Abel Verde. So keep uh, his name in mind as well, especially after uh, a little more, uh, you know, room to move up the depth chart with Etienne moving on to Georgia. All right. Now, the last 10 minutes or so wanted to uh, talk about a, a group of five team that uh, had its spring game on Saturday as well, UTSA. 
pretty um, uh, interesting period for the Roadrunners. Um, I, I personally uh, expect they're going to be, you know, a solid team, losing some of their their uh, biggest uh, impact players. I mean, the the you know the best player in program history. Uh, Frank Harris, certainly one of those. And, and Harris, by the end of his UTSA career, um, uh, you know, uh, wasn't quite what he was a little bit earlier just due to the, the long list of injuries um, that he had endured. But, uh, you know, was a what four-year starter at least, uh, was there seven years, I think. Um, uh, Frank Harris last season completed 65% of his passes for 2,500 plus yards, 18 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Uh, he was uh, not as productive as of a runner toward the end of his career, but still finished with 323 yards last year and four touchdowns on the ground. Uh, but, you know, with most programs, you know, the, the handing off from a player like Frank Harris, uh, it, it would be, you know, easy to assume that you know, perhaps you don't want to uh, just just give that to a guy that doesn't have a whole lot of experience. And Owen McGowan and and Eddie Lee Marburger, the top two uh, returners from last year's roster, have had some experience. They they uh, let's see, McGowan played six games last year, also got a little bit of experience at Colorado the previous year. Uh, Marburger played in three games last season had some prior experience at UTSA as well. Uh, McCown had 440 yards, four touchdowns, and three interceptions in his uh, six games last year, where Marburger had 300 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Uh, both of them uh, threw about 50 pass attempts there. But um, uh, there's there's been plenty of speculation, discussion. Uh, is the, the successor to Frank Harris currently on the roster? UTSA... Uh, is a team that, you know, I, I honestly would not be shocked if uh, they decide to, to bring somebody else in. And, you know, according to reports, including Greg Luca of the San Antonio Express News and J.J. Perez of Inside Runner Sports, um, it was a bit of a defensive slugfest for uh, UTSA in its spring game on Saturday. The final score, I believe, was 11 to 10. Um, McCown's first three possessions ended with two punts and a turnover on a low snap. Uh, he uh, nearly was intercepted on the opening series. Uh, Marburger uh, was uh, uh, orchestrated the offense's only first half scoring drive. His connection with JJ Sparkman, who was the standout performer, the Texas Tech transfer, 6'4, big target. Um, uh, his connection with Sparkman on the right sideline helped set the stage for an eight-yard touchdown pass uh, to a tight end at Houston Thomas. So according to Perez, uh, he believes McCown has a slight edge, may have a slight edge coming out of the spring, but Marburger looks like he's continued to improve. Uh, nevertheless, again, this is this is just speculation on my part, but I mean, thinking back to, to all those, you know, very talented uh, Ohio State quarterbacks, not that one of them necessarily is, is looking at UTSA, uh, but there are, you know, quarterback competitions where it's, it's clear, you know, we're, we're getting some separation, whether it's from three to two or, um, you know, a, a kind of head to head uh, competition, perhaps it's clear to the locker room. That's something that Chip Kelly talked a little bit about, and, and we've heard others mention it as well. Um, but after the spring game, Kelly said, you know, something along the lines, paraphrasing here of uh, the players in the rock, locker room, they know, right? So even before uh, a, a, an announcement is made uh, officially, more often than not, um, the locker room knows, the coaching staff probably knows. So even though we're, you know, hearing quotes, oh, it's so close, you know, could go either way. Both of those guys look great. Both of them have things they need to work on. Most of the time, it's it's clear uh, to the players who are involved in the competition. It's clear to the coaches. And, and I imagine very soon, maybe something's happened while we've discussed, you know, been, been on uh, the air live here, but um, there are going to be some talented quarterbacks entering the transfer portal. UTSA might be a place where they look to bring one in. Now, will you know that player automatically be uh, expected to start? Not necessarily. If it's a you know big time 
uh, player with a lot of experience, then then yeah, maybe. Uh, but McCown, Marburger, they were there all spring, got as many reps. The coaching staff knows them well, been there multiple years, both of them. Uh, McCown now in the second year, Marburger's been there multiple years. So um, this this quarterback competition, I think, could go either way. But uh, there's a deep group of running backs. And, and on that note, in the spring game, Justin Rodriguez uh, and Rocco Griffin were the top two running backs. Griffin got first team reps. Rodriguez, uh, second team reps, it sounded like, or, or was the second running back uh, in the mix because Kevorian Barnes and Robert Henry uh, were both not dressed out for the game due to injury. Um, also, uh, wide receiver Devin McEwen did not play. Um, uh, head coach Jeff Trailer said that McEwen and Henry could have played, but Barnes is still recovering from an off-season off -season shoulder injury. Um, so, uh, you know, UTSA getting back to uh, our, our returning production, numbers. Um, they are a little below FBS average just in terms of overall adjusted returning production. Getting McCown and Marburger a little bit of experience when Harris was limited, especially early in the season last year, uh, probably you know paid off, certainly as, as uh, the coaching staff is, is trying to get uh, a, a real read on if one of those two are, are going to replace Harris, but uh, that helped a little bit with the returning production numbers as well. UTSA is currently ranked 94th in adjusted offensive returning production. Uh, the rushing attack is mostly in place with Barnes, Henry, and Griffin all back. Barnes led the team with 715 yards last season. Uh, Henry had 588, and Griffin had 483. Um, those three, I mean, all had at least 90 attempts, no more than 147. Uh, Henry had double-digit touchdowns, scored 11 times, while Barnes and Griffin each scored six times. So if all three of those players return, you can expect there will be plenty of opportunity for that, you know, whoever that quarterback is, to sort of ease into the role a little bit, lean pretty heavily on Barnes and Henry and Griffin, in part also because uh, the team's top two receivers are – uh, gone. Joshua Cephas and Taggy Ogle Kellogg uh, both are out of eligibility. Cephas was targeted 121 times last year, had 89 catches for 1,151 yards and 10 touchdowns. Ogle Kellogg uh, was targeted about half as much, had 33 catches, 575 yards, and seven touchdowns. Uh, McEwen, as we mentioned, is back. He's the leading returning receiver. He had 42 catches, 546 yards, and three touchdowns, which is the most among returning players. Tight end Oscar Cardenas is also back. Um, he had 32 catches, 280 yards, and two scores. Willie McCoy uh, had 18 catches, 164 yards, and two touchdowns as well. So there is some talent there. You know, J.J. Sparkman didn't put up a lot of uh, big numbers last year at Texas Tech. Only two catches, nine yards, zero touchdowns. But expect that he is going to be maybe the number one receiver. I mean, there's a lot of positive buzz in the last week or so about Sparkman. Um, but McEwen, high-quality uh, performer as well. Uh, he and McCoy, if both of them are back and fully healthy, uh, combined with Sparkman, think that that's going to be a pretty solid starting group of wide receivers. The offensive line, as it has been for, for multiple years now at, UTA, uh, at UTSA, is a little bit of a work in progress. Uh, two double-digit start uh, players are gone, three return, and then they add C.J. James, a transfer from New Mexico. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, the Roadrunners rank 61st in our adjusted defensive returning production numbers. Uh, the top three tacklers and four of the top five are all back. Defensive back Ken Robinson, and linebackers Jamal Ligon, Martavius French, and uh, Donye Taylor are all back. Uh, Devin Randall, transfer coming in, is uh, going to supplement that depth at the linebacker position. Um, Denver Harris, former five-star defensive back recruit, uh, he is in as well. Uh, has got the potential to make an impact. He and both Zach Morris are competing for starting roles. Morris, a transfer from New Mexico. So uh, UTSA a little more active in the transfer portal, perhaps on the defensive side of the ball, at least as far as uh, you know, guys who, who uh, produced at a high level. Um, but this is a, a very interesting team that, um, you know, the, the, result, the results out of spring, the, the uh, reports, 
Um, and especially, you know, Perez, his write up uh, for the, the 247 split was very positive, said, you know, quite simply as one of his uh, five takeaways, UTSA will be good. And I, I think I agree. Um, but they are a team that, you know, has plenty of questions still, things that, that are definitely going to have to work themselves out. Uh, looking at the schedule, UTSA opens with new FBS uh, newcomer, Kennesaw State, in week one. They travel back-to-back uh, -back weeks in weeks two and three to Texas State and to Texas. So a couple of uh, pretty tough matchups there. One of the favorites in the Sun Belt, I expect, in Texas State. And then, you know, one of the teams that's very, very high uh, in our power ratings and, and you know, considered a, a national championship playoff contender type team in Texas. So two and one, if you if you're able to, you know, survive those first three games at two and one, you feel really, really good if you're UTSA one and two, not necessarily the end of the world. They finish with FCS opponent uh, Houston Christian in the non-conference before traveling to East Carolina to open American conference play. They do get a week off before a trip to Rice, but that's two back-to-back -back road games in the first, what, six weeks for UTSA? Just something to monitor, perhaps. Uh, they do have a home game against FAU, then a trip to Tulsa, and then host Memphis before the second off week, November 9th. They have a Friday night game at home against North Texas and then also host Temple. Those are back-to-back -back Friday nights, but both at home. And they finish the regular season against AAC newcomer Army. So a long trip and, and probably a, a pretty cold uh, environment there at West Point, November 30th. So this UTSA team is, um, I don't know, I, I personally have just been very, very impressed with Jeff Trailer. The job that he has done um, to uh, find some underrated players, but also uh, there's a lot of talent on the roster as well. Um, he's just he's he's somebody who has my you know want to give him the benefit of the doubt. So even though on paper, and I, I imagine our UTSA uh, power rating is is going to slip quite a bit. Uh, UTSA is a team that. You know, for the the last couple of years, especially with Frank Harris and and you know when that wide receiver core was as uh, you know much at full strength uh, as it could be with guys like Cephas and and Ogle Kellogg, but also prior to that, Zakari Franklin in the mix as well. There's a little bit of uh, I'm not sure Decorian Clark of what his situation is. I think the last report I saw, uh, not only I mean it sounds like he was out in the the spring game, but um, perhaps his injury might not be fully healed until the season starts uh, this upcoming year, and, and Clark missed all but a couple of snaps last season. Uh, but when that group was fully healthy, uh, you know, and, and Trey Moore, somebody we talked about who was transferred to uh, Texas, um, uh, UTSA was putting up roster strength numbers in the you know, 30s and 40s, which is really, really difficult to do for most, um, you know, group of five conference teams. They were in the top 25 at times in our overall power rankings, which is is really, really rare for uh, non-power conference teams. So uh, UTSA was a top 50 team for the most part for us last year. I won't be uh, you know, too surprised if they're expected to be more middle of the pack in the conference, you know, maybe in the 70s, 80s, something like that in our overall power ratings. Um, but I also won't be uh, very surprised if, if Jeff Trailer is able to get this team back to being, you know, a competitive uh, conference title contending team. I, I, I am sure that's not going to be what our numbers expect from UTSA. Um, but I think that, you know, we should not uh, expect to lower their ceiling too much from last season's nine and four finish seven and one in conference play. Uh, perhaps they will take a step back, especially if you know a, a quarterback doesn't step up and and uh, take over that role. Um, but if they're able to keep you know that that experienced offensive line together, that running back depth together, uh, the defense continues to play as well as it did in the spring. Uh, and last year when they were a top 50 unit with some experience coming back, then I think this UTSA team is going to be very dangerous in uh, the AAC this year. 
Um, the schedule sets up pretty well. Uh, yeah, some tough matchups early, but among the you know biggest title contenders, getting Memphis at home, not having to play Tulane, um, looks looks pretty good for UTSA to be competitive. So uh, that will do it for us today. There are dozens of spring games uh, that we will continue uh, to find out information on. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday with more from this weekend, uh, but also plenty of transfer news that I'm sure is continuing uh, to break this morning. Um, and uh, we'll have uh, as much of that as, as we can get our hands on. We'll also get our uh, returning production database and our team profiles updated as quickly as we can with all that coming out uh, this week. So keep an eye on that if you're an All-22 or C2C Winning Edge tier member. Uh, we'll try to keep you as up-to-date as possible uh, on those. But uh, we'll also be back with more spring game information on Wednesday on Good Morning College Football. So uh, everyone have a, a wonderful day, and we will see you then. Thanks so much.